He almost got away. Okay. <laughs> so this is the red-headed gamma. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. It's a beautiful morning here in West Togo, and we're looking for what is arguably the most popular pet snake today, the ball python. When most people picture ball python habitat, they picture that. That's actually a misnomer. You get caliber pythons in that thick jungle bush, and you get gaboon vipers, and you get a lot of cool stuff. But the ball pythons actually prefer this more open, grassy habitat with varied shuffled rocks and scrub. Balls like scrub. So we're gonna look for ball pythons and end that myth and show you where they really come from. It's gonna be a long day, lots of hiking ahead, but it uh, should be fun. It's really cool to be in, in ball python habitat. That was actually the first exotic snake I ever kept. I was seven years old, bought one from a mall. Here I am years later actually in their home. I can't tell you how exciting this is. He almost got away. Okay. <laughs> so this is the red-headed gamma. He hasn't quite colored up yet to take on his famous male color pattern of the bright blues and the red head, which is where they get the name red-headed gamma, because they really have to be nice and warmed up and it's early in the morning still. He was just on these rocks trying to absorb that UVB uh, and UVA and but this guy's had a tough life. I mean, he's got mites in his ear. His tail's been broken, but it's rehealed. It looks like it did there too. I mean, these guys, they're, they're so territorial and just rough and tumble. And they're really fun lizards to watch. They've got these big fangs, two fangs here, two fangs there. And as you can tell, no hesitancy to bite. As I mentioned before, their tails can break. Um, they don't really regenerate. So be very gentle with your tails. So this species is dimorphic. The males, when they're colored up, have red heads and almost black or blue body, and then a multicolored tail that has red, and then it turns to this black or blue again. The females are brownish with red flanks. Look at those teeth. Those are definitely, those will bite. Huh, you wanna bite me. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you finish basking. All right, little dude. You are so cool. I bet you're just the king of these rocks. On your way. There you go. So a lot of the red-headed gammas in America come from Togo or Ghana. They're bordering nations here in West Africa or Miami because there's an introduced invasive species population there. And I think it's great that the invasive agamas are actually being utilized back into the pet trade so they don't have to export more from here. Whoa, check this out. <laughs> so this castle behind me is a termite mound. These termite mounds are a metropolis on the mountain. The rocky outcroppings are great for some gecko species, some scorpion species, and the termite mounds are actually a common place to find ball pythons. These spires on the termite castle, that's how the termite mounds thermoregulate. They help control the temperature. They're also incubators. A lot of monitor species will break right in, lay their eggs in, the termites will fix the hole, and now they've got an armored incubator. And when the babies are born, They've got termites to eat. I mean, it's amazing. From this side, you can really appreciate how massive these things are. But all of its residents are probably inside sleeping safely right now, so we're gonna continue down that way where it looks a little lush and greener and maybe we'll get some daytime activity. Right now, we're right on the border of Ghana in West Africa, on the Togo side, and there's a few gecko species. There's a uh, tail is whip scorpions. This is their shelter and their heat and all in one. So there's a lot of different things that inhabit this biome. So this shiny chunk of rock, 
This is something ball python breeders are really familiar with, but probably don't recognize it. This is vermiculite. It's actually a soft, crumbly rock that they heat up, and that's how you get the stuff in stores that you incubate eggs on. I'm gonna try to uh, take this piece on my luggage, my carry-on, and uh, hopefully it doesn't weigh too much so we can start a new line of Zilla vermiculite. Right here, locality-specific vermiculite. You have to have it. If you don't, your dinkers will just be strange-looking normals. It's, it's the product of the future, I'm telling you. You should buy it. Well, it's coming towards the end of the day and heat's finally starting to die. We're getting a nice breeze. I think unfortunately it was a bust. When it's really, really hot out, you don't get good activity. We're gonna keep exploring the mountains and hopefully uh, find our royal prize. So the locals say the ball pythons are most active after the sun goes down. And as you can tell, that's getting really close. I'm gonna keep poking around because you might have some early risers and you never know, but uh, it's almost time. Almost. Oh. Right here. <laughs> A ball python! Wow, this thing is heck for awesome. We're so familiar with these animals as pets in the States, but they do have a special place here in their own culture. In Ghana, there's actually a village that worships them as gods. And uh, here in Togo, there were some villages that made their entire living catching these animals for export. They would, they would catch the females, harvest the eggs, send those off to the United States, and then that was where their income came from. Now that the market's basically crashed because we have so many captive bred ball pythons back in the States, that's led to them skinning them instead, which is really tragic that these snakes are getting skinned and the result of the skinning is now the farmers are having a much bigger rodent problem with mice and rats. So these snakes play an important role culturally in some spots of West Africa, and they play a really important role in the agriculture and the survival of the people. There's people who have made livings off them, and even today, I think there's farmers that probably don't realize how important they are just to their crop and their harvest. Shy and gentle animal. Snakes have such a bad reputation of mean, aggressive killers. It's just such a stupid generalization. I'm gonna take my measurements right here, right beside him. Pretty stoked. Temp right now is mid 80s. No surprise, the small rocks have retained more heat than the ground. Their burrows are often more humid than the general habitat around. So watch the snake shed. If it sheds bad, it probably needed a little more humidity. Indented eye caps on the snake if they kind of have striation to them, it's probably too dry. One final observation. I think these animals might not require more space to survive, but there's no saying they wouldn't appreciate it. So if you have the room, I'd give them a little bit more because they're animals we love. And why not do the best we can? All right, dude, see ya.